In the previous video, you learned the basics of how a lens forms an image. In this video, you will explore some of the properties of real lenses that limit their performance and how you can work within those limits. In this video, you will cover how diffraction limits the resolving power of a lens, aberrations that prevent a lens from creating a theoretically perfect image, including spherical aberrations, field curvature, chromatic aberration, distortion, and astigmatism, the interaction between diffraction and aberration, and finally, the modulation transfer function that describes the resolving power of a lens. That is a lot of important information you can use, so let's get started. In an earlier video on optics, you learned that when light passes by an edge, it tends to curve around the edge. This is called diffraction. The lens has some finite diameter, which is limited by edges. Therefore, there is diffraction at the edges of light waves passing through the lens. This diffraction prevents the lens from focusing light to a perfect point. Considering only diffraction, the lens focuses light to a pattern called an airy disk. The airy disk has a central bright peak where most of the light energy is received, surrounded by alternating dark and light rings. The diameter of the first dark ring is considered the resolving capability of the lens. Here is the formula for the diffraction limited resolution of a lens. You probably notice two things immediately. First, it is affected by the F number of the lens. Smaller F numbers representing larger lens openings give finer resolution, that is, a smaller airy disk. Second, it is affected by wavelength of the light. All other things being equal, shorter wavelengths give a smaller diffraction limit for the lens. We will see in just a bit there is more to the resolving power of a lens than diffraction. Diffraction is just the theoretically best resolution a lens can provide. So far we have been talking about theoretically perfect lenses, limited only by the laws of physics. Practical lenses have limits. There are manufacturing tolerances. Glasses have dispersion, which is a change in the index of refraction with wavelength. Spherical surfaces are very close to ideal, but not actually ideal. And there are design trade-offs to make the lens work over a range of conditions and be manufacturable. We will leave it with the lens designers and manufacturers to struggle with these challenges and trade-offs. We just need to be aware of how these challenges can affect the performance of a lens. Aberration is the general term for any departure of a practical lens from a theoretical lens. We will be discussing five of the most common aberrations that affect imaging and machine vision. As we noted, spherical surfaces are not the absolute theoretically perfect surface shape for a lens. The perfect shape, which is very close to spherical, depends on the magnification, diameter of the lens, and the wavelength of light. Spherical surfaces, though, are practical to manufacture to extremely high precision. Because the spherical surface is not perfect, all the light rays do not converge to a single point. This is called spherical aberration. In an earlier video on light, we discussed refraction due to a material and how the material's index of refraction changes with the wavelength of light. You might recall that this change in index of refraction is called dispersion, and that dispersion is what causes prisms to spread a beam of white light out into its colors. Well, the glass used in making lenses also has dispersion. That means the focal length of a lens changes with the wavelength of light. So different wavelengths do not focus at the same distance with the same magnification. The difference in focus distance is called longitudinal chromatic aberration. At a fixed image distance, each color is focused at a different position. This is called lateral chromatic aberration. 
we would prefer that a lens provide precisely the same magnification over the entire image. Any deviation from this perfectly constant magnification is called distortion. Typically, all practical lenses exhibit some distortion, even if it's very low. If the magnification decreases from the center towards the edges of the image, it is called barrel distortion. If the magnification increases from the center towards the edges of the image, it is called pincushion distortion. In a perfect world, a lens's focus would not depend on the direction of edges in the scene. However, variations in manufacturing tolerances, effects like slightly oval rather than spherical surfaces, decentering of lens elements, and the tilt of lens elements in the lens assembly can result in a condition where the edges in one direction are in sharp focus, but edges perpendicular to those are slightly out of focus. This condition is called astigmatism. Again, the ideal lens would focus a flat scene onto a flat image. However, many lenses achieve sharpest focus on a curved scene or a curved image. This is called field curvature. The main reason a lens designer uses multiple glass elements in a lens design is to minimize aberrations over the working range of a lens. As we discussed earlier, the diffraction limit of a lens improves as the diameter of a lens gets larger, or put another way, as the f-number of a lens gets smaller. What you may have intuitively grasped is that the effects of aberration increase as the lens gets larger or the f-number gets smaller. We can combine these effects and realize at large f-numbers, diffraction limits the resolution, while at small f-numbers, aberrations limit the resolution. At some f number, the lens will produce its best resolution. Unfortunately for us, lens specifications do not normally give us this optimum f number. You may be wondering how you can learn anything about the resolving power of a lens. Fortunately, there is a measurement called the modulation transfer function, or simply MTF, that helps. The MTF is a graph of contrast as a function of spatial frequency. So before we look at MTF, we need to clarify what is meant by spatial frequency and by contrast. You probably know frequency as events per unit time, cycles per second, or hertz. Well, spatial frequency is just events per unit distance, for example, cycles per millimeter. The more cycles per millimeter, the higher the frequency. MTF is based on frequency as sine waves. For practical purposes, a black and white bar pattern is often used in testing since these bars are much easier to produce than optical sine waves. Technically, testing with bar patterns gives a function called the contrast transfer function, or CTF. The differences between MTF and CTF are not too great and both are accepted as testing methods. Contrast is a measure of the difference between light and dark. For the purpose of MTF, the equation is shown here. Higher contrast means a greater difference between the light and dark areas. Here is a graph for MTF. Notice that the vertical axis is contrast and the horizontal axis is spatial frequency. Our MTF curve will be unique for the lens at a specified F number, a specified working distance, and for a specified spectrum of light. If any of these parameters change, the MTF curve will change. For any lens under specified conditions, we can add in a curve that represents the diffraction limit. That is, no lens, no matter how well designed, can do better than this limit at a given F number, working distance, and light spectrum. Next, we'll add in a curve representing the performance of the lens in the center of the image. Depending on the lens design, this curve can have different shapes. We might correctly expect that the lens does not perform as well at the edges as it does in the center. At the edge, we have two curves. One is the tangential MTF and the other is the sagittal MTF. We should explore what is meant by tangential 
and sagittal. This rectangle represents an image. For discussion, let's draw a circle centered on the image. Now we will add an arrow that is tangential to the circle. This is the tangential direction. Next, we show bars that represent a target that might be used to measure tangential resolution. We can add another arrow in the sagittal or radial direction. We also add the bars that might be used to measure the sagittal resolution. We can now better interpret our MTF graph. The sagittal resolution is just about always the lowest resolution and, for most imaging applications, will indicate the performance limit of a lens. The question becomes, how much contrast does the application need? Typically, 20% is used as a limit. Some applications require more, and occasionally an application can deal with even lower contrast. While a published MTF curve is good information about a lens, it is specific to an F number, wavelength range, and working distance. The chances are that your application will have different conditions than these. You can ask your lens to supplier to provide you with MTF curves for your imaging conditions. Now you should know more about real-world attributes of imaging. How diffraction limits the resolution of even the very best lenses. How aberrations further limit what practical lenses can achieve. Several common aberrations including spherical, chromatic, distortion, astigmatism, field curvature, and how the modulation transfer function, or MTF, helps us understand the performance of a lens. For more information on light, as well as many other related topics that you will find useful in your work in machine vision, download the paper Optics for Machine Vision Practitioners at the URL shown here.